What's up guys, Classes in Session, back with more Neo 2 Alpha studying. I'll cover this mechanic briefly in my Everything New in Neo 2 video, but today I'll go more in depth with the newest and surely the coolest feature of Neo 2, the addition of Yokai skills. I'll also be making a video covering the demon forms in the next video, so make sure to subscribe and give the video a like for your one stop shop for everything Neo 2. So, Yokai skills are the skills of Yokai you defeat, even bosses, where you can use their abilities to your advantage, and a lot of them seem very strong. The way you obtain these skills is by picking up the Soul Cores, a new ethereal rarity tier item that drop randomly time to time from Yokai you kill. However, you do have to safely go back to a shrine in order to purify them, to be able to equip and use them. If you die while not having your Guardian Spirit, you will lose any cores you picked up, but haven't purified yet. In the alpha, we could equip two skills at once, which each skill has their own attunement cost. Do note that you can't equip two of the same skill. As you see here, there is an attunement cap, so micromanaging them plays a part in the skills you want to use or builds you want to make with them, as the more powerful skills usually have higher attunement cost. Also, cores do take up inventory space, so yet another thing you will have to probably micromanage to the dismay of people that don't like the inventory management. As of now, the attunement cost limit varies from Spirit Guardian to Spirit Guardian. We'll have to see if we can raise it somehow in the final game, but in the alpha, it was locked at whatever the Spirit Guardian had. Shark had the most at 18 attunement, while Grandpa Kato had the least at 14. So you have to consider that factor when picking Guardians as well. Will you sacrifice attunement costs, potentially losing the more powerful Yokai skill combinations just for the Guardian substats? That's another factor to consider for your builds now. Before moving on, I will point out that in the menu there's just enough space for a third Yokai skill, so we could potentially equip three of them in the final game, either from the get-go or perhaps unlocked in post-game. Here's hoping that's possible. Let's now move on to using the skills. To use them, you use up a new meter, the third one you see here, which is called Yokai Force. You build this up by simply attacking enemies. The new Dark Realm mechanic, which bosses have and usually a few parts of the normal stage will have as well, increases the amount of Yokai Force you can get per attack within the realm. From a quick test, it's about 25% more force gained per attack in the Dark Realm. I also wouldn't be surprised if there will be stages in the final game that are nothing but Dark Realm throughout the entire stage. That seems like it'll be fun. There's also a plethora of other factors that affect how much force you generate or the total amount you have as well, such as on the Soul Cores themselves, via the substat effects, or Guardian Spirit's protection bonuses. Aww, the little cute fur balls you find throughout the game who's a cutie also generate you yokai force over time with a buff like effect which is so nice of them so long as you have yokai force you can spam the yokai skills but each skill costs a certain amount of force to use so usually you'd only get two to three uses in a small time frame at least as of right now with the lowish amount of force you have in the alpha and i suspect the early game as well all yokai you can kill or interact with, like the cute and adorable Scampus, will have their own yokai skills you can use. So potentially, or rather hopefully, depending how many yokai are in the final game, we could have over 50 unique skills to use at our disposal. So from here on, I'll stop talking for a bit so you can see all the available skills from the alpha in action. Of them, Waira, Magatsu Warrior, Yoki, Iban, Datra, and Nurakabe, the wall mimic, skills seem to be the most useful ones so far. Magatsu Warrior in particular was very strong when you repeated uses basically draining all the snake's key in multiple consecutive uses. Which, that is a thing people don't know. Some skills can be held down or spammed for unique follow-up attacks. And now I'll shut up and you can just watch the rest of the video.
And that is all the yokai skills in action so far. A lot of them were unique, others kinda meh, but it was usually the weaker ones anyways. Well, except Yatsu no Kami's one. What the hell is it trying to do? Uh, which speaking of, that is a change or addition I'd like to see, if it's not in, a description of what the skill actually does, or maybe more in-depth numbers of the amount of elemental or status damage it's dealing. For now, you can only watch a short clip of the skill in action, but there's no description of what it's trying to do at all. You have to test it out yourself. Example, the Kodama one seems to drop elixirs when you hit someone with it, but there also seems to be a limit to how many you can drop in a short period of time, at least against Anenra, so I hope a description of each skill is added for better clarity in the final game. Well, let's wrap this video up with the stats on the soul cores themselves. That's right, more RNG of whether you want to keep a core or not. Each core so far has two permastats specific to the type of core. Most effects have to deal with yokai force or skills themselves. Each core has a bonus attack and defense stat, which likely corresponds to the core's skill rank. No doubt the alpha is early game as the cores had low skill ranks, but the max is going to be 9. Whereas the highest one in the alpha was rank 4, I believe, Magatsu Warriors, which likely means the next chapters will probably only gain one rank each progressively, so presumably there will be 5 chapters like in Neo 1. I'm curious though if we'll get some enhanced version in the post game though, on New Game Plus and Way of the Whatever, if that's still a thing. <laughs> As far as effects, they seem pretty unique compared to stats on armor or weapons. The most unique effect so far is the Yokai Key Pulse, making the skill effectively a Key Pulse when you have negative key you can gain back from a Key Pulse normally. Although, to be honest, just Key Pulsing normally and then immediately using the Yokai skill is basically the same thing. It's just like a split second difference, so bleh. There's one that generates force when using Nijutsu, Omnio, and even ranged weapons too, for those that like those kinds of builds. The Timely Guard one in particular is very nice in that it generates a nice chunk every time it guard, which is a guard just before an attack hits. Think of Perfect Block in Sekiro for those unfamiliar with Neo 1. But for the more skilled players, this one seems like a good one to have on either of the cores you pick. And to end it off, your Sensei is gonna give you some secret tech that most don't know about. In the Dark Realm, you can actually key pulse a good chunk of your yokai force back after using a yokai skill and the animation ends. So it's very nice and definitely encourages the spam of these skills when in this realm, which many people have struggled with the snake boss, just spam some yokai skills during that one phase and you should be good to go. But that'll be it, science class is over. Thanks for attending my students. Make sure to give the video a like if you want good grades. Your homework today is to leave a comment on what you guys think of the new yokai skills. Any favorites so far? Again, next class is going to be covering yokai shift forms, so make sure to show up on time by subscribing for more Neo 2 epicness.